Hi, everybody, and welcome to Teaching Tip Tuesday, brought to you by the Center for Inclusive Teaching and Learning here at UWSP. This week, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the issues we've seen in the classroom as a result of the pandemic. If you've noticed low test scores, low student engagement, and low attendance, you are not alone. These are common complaints from faculty from the past year. For faculty who taught commonly in face-to-face -face environments prior to the pandemic, a lot of the changes that we saw in the way that students were behaving and performing in our classes came as quite a shock. We knew that we were teaching the same way we always had, but we weren't seeing the same results. There has been ample research documenting reductions in learning and academic progress that resulted from the pandemic. These deficits are not unique to higher ed, but have been described in primary and secondary education as well, where achievement in math and science have slipped and where recorded standardized test scores are lower than they have been historically. These deficits are greater for historically marginalized student populations. This has a lot of implications for UWSP. Most importantly, we can assume that the students coming into our university are likely to be less prepared than previous cohorts, and that this could continue into the foreseeable future. We're expecting deficits in background knowledge as well as in basic learning skills. So what can you, as an instructor, do about this? You must begin by accepting that you have to adapt your teaching to meet your students where they are. You may have to re-examine your assumptions, provide remedial support, and work more to cultivate a positive and supportive classroom climate for your students. Secondly, you'll have to collect data to analyze the effects of any changes that you make in the way that you're teaching so that you'll know whether they're helping or harming your students. Okay, let's break down some of the ways that you can meet your students where they are, beginning with examination of your assumptions. Assumptions often go unacknowledged, and because of this, we are likely to be teaching well, but we are likely also to pitch our course to students who are different than the ones that are actually in the seats. So take some time to ask yourselves, why do you think your students are in your class, and are you sure? What background knowledge and skills do you expect your student to have? Think about some of the fundamentals, how fluent they are with reading, whether or not they have a decent vocabulary, whether or not they can write, and whether or not they have the math skills that you expect them to have. Think about basic study skills, like being able to identify key concepts, take notes, whether or not they know study strategies or can cope with academic rigor. And now realize that because of the pandemic, for all of these things, your students are five to six months behind where they would normally be in their educational process. So it's likely that your assumptions are wrong. Now, what can we do to deal with that? Recognize that because of learning deficits, students need more help than they did before the pandemic. Providing remedial support is essential, but it doesn't need to cut into your teaching time. Remember to keep your academic standards high, but plan ahead to provide support for struggling students. Remember to discuss with your students your expectations for both their learning and their engagement. Students used to the relaxed standards of the pandemic may need help understanding the workload of your course. If you have expectations for students' prior knowledge, please keep them. We shouldn't shift our courses downward. Instead, make the expectation clear to the students and provide appropriate links to both tutoring and potential videos or readings that will provide the remedial support that they need. Help students to prepare for exams by developing their test-taking skills. Break down questions with them so that they can better understand the expectations you have for their depth of knowledge and the types of answers that you're looking for. Remember to model appropriate student study skills when you can, promoting students to actively engage with material in your course rather than passively consuming it. If you don't have time to do this in class, you can include small video clips in Canvas. Remember to cultivate a positive classroom climate. Students are more motivated in classes when they feel valued and respected. You can do this by paying attention to the following details. First, set achievable goals for your students and let them know that you believe in them and their ability to achieve these goals. Be sure to communicate positively with your students. Let them know your expectations. Reach out to them with your concerns about their performance. Use appropriate notification channels to report struggling students so that they can get the guidance they need. Also, be sure to provide students with ample feedback so that they can use that to improve their performance in your class. Show students that you value their input in the course by asking for feedback about what's working and not working. You can use this feedback to identify problematic areas in the course if there are any. 
It's more likely that responses will be mixed, but sharing those mixed responses with students will help to prevent them from living in their own echo chambers about the difficulty of your course. Be transparent. Student engagement is increased when students understand the what, why, and how of learning. Finally, provide flexibility as part of your course design by having some things like looser deadlines or dropping one of a series of assignments. Students will always have problems, and you'll save both you and them from headaches by building some flexibility into your course. But remember not to overdo it. You have to control your teaching load too, so don't stray into the highly demanding realm of completely individualized education if you can help it. Whatever you do in your course, be sure to collect data on how it affects your students. This is the only way you'll be able to know for sure what the effects of your changes are. Try to determine how your course modifications affect attendance, student scores and attitudes, as well as your own workload and teaching satisfaction. The pandemic is likely to have lasting effects on student learning. We can't change that, but we can work toward more effective teaching by adjusting our approach to meet the students where they are. And that's this week's teaching tip, brought to you by the Center for Inclusive Teaching and Learning here at UWSP. Remember, SIDL offers a variety of support for course design, learning activities, assessment, and pedagogy. Visit our website to schedule a consult today.